Greetings users of the interweb! I am so excited today! I'm testing a little rebranding, so let me know what you think, but today we are going to talk about how to find suppliers for your small business, and I am specifically looking at Amazon. I know a lot of people suggest Alibaba and eBay and things like that, but I just, I don't know. I feel like Amazon is a little more reliable, but anyway. For this example, we're going to pretend that we're starting a scrunchie business. So here I am looking at scrunchies, looking at the reviews, checking what people have to say about the quality of the product, um, looking at the store reviews as a whole. So how many sales they have, how long they've been in business, um, any complaints, things like that. And I am doing this for a couple of different companies. So what you're really looking for here is someone who seems reputable. You can see this one has over 50,000 sales. They have a near perfect record. Everything looks good. So um, the second thing that I check for is all of their products. If you see that they sell a bunch of different things, like here you can see they're selling hot glue sticks, t-shirts, um, you know, that's typically a sign that I want to stay away from them. I want to go for a company that has a lot of the same items in a category. So let's say we're looking for scrunchies. They might also have hair clips, headbands, combs, things like that versus a company that sells scrunchies but they also sell garden tools and pots and pans and a bunch of different product categories that shows that they themselves are probably drop shipping outsourcing there is not as much quality control and things like that so once i have all the criteria this one looks good i'm gonna go ahead to their profile and click contact seller and send them an email, get started with the process. Another thing you can do is check if they have a website um, outside of Amazon and contact them that way. Yeah, so I may or may not have looked at the wrong company here, but you get the idea. Just check if they have an account on eBay, if they have a Shopify account, if they have their own personal website. And these are all good signs that they are selling in plenty of places and it doesn't hurt to look at the product reviews and that um, on their websites as well. So. What you want to do is start off with saying that you are the purchasing agent for a small business. I do my best to distance myself. You can say you're an intern, it doesn't have to be the purchasing agent, but just don't say that you're the owner or that you're starting a business or anything like that. Next up, you say the product that you're interested in. You should put like the product link or number or whatever. Um, I just put 12 piece crunchy because again this is an example and I kind of forgot which one I was looking at so just say that you're interested and since it's currently spring I am saying that I'm interested for my summer collection setting your date with them for next season gives you a bit of wiggle room in case things don't go well with them and you have to get a new supplier or whatever the case may be you do have time to make those adjustments and implement those changes if i wanted to start something for the spring everything would need to be done within weeks and it's just rushed and it does not create a good outcome next up i would say um, that I'm interested in multiple items, put more links or product codes in there. And the more that you buy with them, then the more likely they are to give you a better deal. And I always ask for samples. If they say no, it's not a big deal. You just buy a product, but it never hurts to ask for samples because they might give them to you for free. And next thing you'll notice is I put a little bit of business jargon in there, minimum order quantity. You could also ask about freight. You can ask whatever kind of industry terms that you want. But again, this is just to sell them on the fact that you are the purchasing agent, the intern, the product manager, whatever. You can honestly make up a title. It doesn't really matter. But just that you are not the owner. This is not for you. This is for a company this is for someone else. Now this is obviously a very bare bones email. There is not much here. It's just a starting point. You definitely want to build on this and it's going to vary according to what you're selling, what your business is and so on and so forth. Similarly, 
when they reply, you will respond accordingly based on what they've told you, what your business is, um, the product that you're trying to sell. There are so many factors, but you still want to keep with this idea that you are an employee. So you want to say things like, my manager has approved me for this budget. Would you be able to offer a discount to meet that? Or... Um, I will have to ask my manager about that. Um, I'll get back to you within two business days. Or um, even something like, my manager was wondering if you could also do custom scrunchies with our logos printed on the fabric. Like, again, it all depends. I have said this so many times already, but if you take nothing else from this video, please take the advice to distance yourself. I don't know what it is about our corporate capitalist society, but people, companies, suppliers, whatever, do not respond well to small businesses. When I started out, I was saying, hi, I would like to sell this product as a small business. And I would get shut down. People would not respond to my emails. They would blatantly say that they won't sell to me, um, or they would not budge at all on prices and discounts and things like that. But as soon as I switched it up and started saying that I was an employee, I got boxes of free products sent to me. I got quick responses. Everything really turned around. All right, so this video is getting a little longer than anticipated. So last point is don't be afraid to bluff a little. This was obviously a completely random example. If you're actually doing this, you want to look at like 70 different suppliers, then narrow it down to your top 10, then contact your top five and so on and so forth. And because you do have a roster, so to speak, you should not be afraid to bluff a little and really push and negotiate to get the best price for yourself. So if you have told them my manager can approve 1000 scrunchies for $700 and they're not willing to budge, then you can say, hey, um, we really wanted to work with you, but um, this other supplier is willing to match our price. Um, could you match their price? If so, we will go ahead with you. Just little things like that to let them know that you are serious and you do want to work with them even though you have other offers. And that brings us to the end for today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments. If you absolutely hate it and think I should never make another video again, please still let me know in the comments. If you have any further questions, leave them down below or shoot me a message on Instagram. If you come across my Instagram and it is completely blank, do not be alarmed. I am rebranding like I said so I will have some more content up but I am responsive on there so feel free to shoot me a message. As always thank you so much again for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.